Let's talk about Rhaegar. Rhaegar is the young princeling, the most privileged man in all the world, heir to the Seven Kingdoms. Now, let's talk about the size of the Seven Kingdoms. We're talking about a, a country the size of both North and South America combined. It is an impossibly large land space. This guy is a trillionaire. You have to imagine, you know, an oligarch when you think about Rhaegar, right? Now, Rhaegar is not interested growing up in many of the things that make a king. He's not interested in war. He wants to read books and poems and song. And that sounds very nice and poetic, but it just sounds very nice and poetic because realistically, to be an effective feudal lord, to be an effective feudal king, you would have to be very concerned with that. Actually, that should have been very concerning for everybody. And yet, instead, we get accounts of Rhaegar from his friends. That's admirable, it's admirable. And yeah, it is admirable, but it's also kind of pretentious. He, he uh, submerses himself in these books after never picking up a sword, the flower, the song. And let's remember that he used to like to play his harp for the poor. He liked to walk among the people. He liked to sing to them. He sang to them. Yes. Imagine that. You're some poor Westerosi serf digging in the mud for potatoes. And the spotless, clean, gilded, silver-haired prince comes down upon his white horse to play his harp. Oh! How wonderful for you to be able to hear the beautiful dulcet tones of the Lord's harp while you dig for your mud potatoes. Just like all the other minstrels. And what did you do? I made sure no one killed him. And I collected the money. Well, you'd like to see how much you could make. I mean, he had castles everywhere, huge tracts of land. He had the ability and resources to fundamentally redefine the economy of Westeros and chose not to do so. Okay, they're still poor people. He didn't unpoor them. He didn't give up his wealth and become a mendicant to free these people from their impoverished ways. Okay, he just gave them his song and their poetry. And really, they were probably busy and he made them stop and listen to him play and threw them bread. Okay, they had things to do. They were busy, they had real life to get to. One time, we got horribly drunk. And as a sidebar, <laughs> Game of Thrones, A Song of Ice and Fire, be very suspicious of any character who fits a fantasy image, okay? When you see the fantastical armies marching into battle with their manipoles of slaves chained together to war beasts and their big beards, remember that they don't know anything about war and that they are about to be completely slaughtered by a brutally effective, completely unartful, very destructive force. I don't know what the show's deal is, but in the books, Everybody who thinks they're in a fantasy novel gets proved that that is not true at the point of a sword or in hellfire, okay? Dracarys. So Rhaegar thinks he's a fantasy character. He reads a prophecy in a book and decides on the spot that that prophecy is about me and only me, the most important man in all the universe with my beautiful silver hair and my purple eyes and my harp. And he comes out of the tower and he says, I shall need armor and a sword. It seems I must be a warrior. If anybody you knew ever said to you that, you would die of laughter. It is the most self-obsessed, pretentious claptrap you've ever heard in your life. That guy is a fop. Your voice needs to come off as elegant as your clothing. People talk about how what a great warrior he was, and a great jouster he was, and a great fighter he was. Sure, he was a great fighter in tournaments. He was a great warrior against the guys trained to teach him how to fight. How many wars did he win? How many wars did he fight? Fought in one war, died, didn't win it. He unhorsed some people in tournaments. We even get that right in your face in season one and also book one when Robert Baratheon wants to enter the melee. So I want to hit somebody. And who's going to hit your bike? Anybody who can. And the last man in his saddle will be you. There's not a man in the Seven Kingdoms would risk hurting you. You're telling me those cowards had let me win? Aye. Do you think anybody's gonna lift a hand in a tournament against Rhaegar, most powerful man in the universe, inheritor of the Iron Throne, uh, his father, the Mad King, who burns people alive for fun? You're gonna lift a hand against that guy? No, you are not. Your life depends on it. So of course he wins tournaments. Of course he wins melees. Of course he unhorses people. He's the prince, okay? So, what is your job as inheritor to a kingdom, as a prince? Your job, okay, is to inherit that kingdom, prevent a rebellion, i.e. preserve stability, and God forbid a war erupt, you gotta win it. What did he do? He 
managed to throw away his kingdom, cause a rebellion, and lose the war. He gets three thumbs down on everything that makes a good king or prince. Rhaegar fought valiantly, Rhaegar fought nobly, and Rhaegar died. Now, I think that that is the entire point. I think the whole point, if you read between the lines, is to subvert the idea of this beautiful prince, this poetic, tragic hero. The whole point, when you really read between the lines, is this guy fucked up, okay? He royally fucked up. Millions of people died because Rhaegar thought a thing in a book from 8,000 years ago was about him. He destroyed a kingdom, destroyed a dynasty, caused himself to be usurped and murdered. From this day until the end of my days. Think about this, think about this. I was talking about the Tyroshi and their ridiculous armors and stuff like that, okay? How about this, Barristan Selmy gets attacked by a pit fighter in the uh, ziggurat, in Daenerys' chambers, okay? We read that chapter from his perspective. The guy is a pit fighter, he's all flash. He's all flash, he's quick, he's quick. He's got his beard, it's forked, and it's, it's painted. And he's got that big hooked sword. Barriss is telling me he's an old, slow man in armor. He's real slow, he's real tired, and he's real all about business. He don't spin around, he doesn't turn his back on his enemy, he keeps his steel leveled mid-range target, takes a defensive stance, and takes his time taking that guy apart piece by piece, while that pit fighter is screaming and showing off for an audience that doesn't exist. And he dies all over that floor. Even now I could cut through the five of you like carving a cake. Okay, every single time somebody is gonna put on a show in this series, in these books, they are done. They're done. Remember Strong Belwas? Strong Belwas? Oh, you're gonna go out against that single rider. Single rider puts on a big show. He puts on his thing, he does his thing. Strong Belwas cuts him in half. Then he poops on him. Literally, he pooped on him. That's actually what happens in the book. They took that out of the show. He dropped Trow, shit all over his corpse. That's what he did. Laughed at them. Then he got poisoned and died. Don't forget Strong Belwas. Don't forget Barris and Selmy and the pit fighter. Rhaegar was no hero. Rhaegar went into battle on a white horse in armor covered in rubies. You know what the uh, protective qualities of rubies are? About nil. They don't really do anything against the hammer. Uh, they don't help you with crap all, okay? Rubies are going to be real bright and shiny and expensive. And when you get your chest stoved in by a fucking war hammer, people are gonna, instead of saving you, they're gonna claw through the mud of the river of the Trident to get your wealth. That's what's gonna happen, and you're gonna die. You're gonna die in the water uh, under the foot of a football star, basically. Okay, you're this like super princeling, this poet, this fencer, this dude with a hammer just crushed you and your entire empire in the mud. This guy had a very outsized opinion of himself, not that important. Okay, you wonder know who the prince was promised was? Daenerys Targaryen, the lady. It was not the fop from the Tower of Joy, okay? It just wasn't. And let's talk about that too, because we first get these books, we think, oh, he's a rapist. He abducted Lyanna Stark because we get the Robin Braith, and think, that's not true. Then, oh, your, your image of him evolves, right? Your image of him evolves. You find out Lyanna Stark was definitely a willing participant. She was really into that guy. Well, of course she was. She was like 14, and he was the world's biggest rock star. She was only 15 years old. You know, he could play that harp all day long from that white horse in his ruby armor. Yeah! Up in my tower of joy! Yeah! Girls is a song of ice and fire! Okay? She was powerless, and the guy that she was supposed to get married to was a drunk brute with a hammer. Of course! She was raised on the songs! He was a questing knight. He was poetry in armor. Anyway, that's my deal. Rhaegar, definitely not a sweet guy. Don't go into battle with armor covered in rubies, you dum-dum.